In this video, I will show you how to get your graded sequence from DaVinci Resolve back to Avid Media Composer. We're in DaVinci Resolve and we have this very simple graded sequence and it's ready to get delivered to the Avid Media Composer editor. In the description below, there's a link to a PDF with all the steps that you need to remember. We're in the delivery page and on the delivery page, we're going to make sure that it says render entire timeline. DaVinci Resolve has made it easy for us. They actually made a preset for Avid. I'm going to hit that one. When you need to export to the Avid Media Composer, these are the settings you're going to be using. Next, I'm going to make sure that my location is right. Your screen is probably going to look different here because I already used this folder before, but you hit browse. If you don't have a folder already, you can make one now. I'm just going to call this one to Avid. I'm in the folder to Avid. I'm going to push open and now it will save all our files that we render out in that folder so we can find them again once we want it imported back into the Media Composer. Here you can decide if it's a single clip or individual clip. Usually if I'm making a delivery for another program, which is not Avid, I'll do a single clip. In this case, it's already chosen individual clips. That means these clips will be exported as five different video files. In this case, when I'm doing it this way, I can give the editor the choice to do a re-edit after we graded it. If the producer or director wants to change something like trim it a bit more or something. It's already chosen our settings for the video. This is just the highest quality you can export to the Avid Media Composer. I'm gonna leave it as it is. Then I'm gonna make sure to use constant bitrate. I'm gonna go into advanced settings and all these I'm just gonna leave as they are. But this one, I'm definitely gonna add 20 frames more. And when I add frame handles to the clips, it means that I can trim it in the Avid Media Composer afterwards. If I want to make the clip longer, I have 20 extra frames to work with. And that's it on the video side. I'm just gonna make sure to go up on the audio side. And here, I'm actually gonna click export audio off. The reason why I'm doing this is that I don't need the sound. I already have the sound files in the Avid Media Composer and I just need the graded files back into the Media Composer so I can make my finishing in the Media Composer. So as soon as I click it off, it'll be grayed out. So no audio will be exported in this file. And then we have files. I'm just gonna leave all the settings as they are. Add it to render queue. If I have multiple renders, make sure to have them all selected and then say render all. And because it's a quite short sequence, it's already done. I make sure I quit resolve so it doesn't conflict with my Avid Media Composer. I made this folder to Avid. In this folder, there'll be a AAF file plus all your media files. The AAF file, we're gonna import into the Media Composer and it's gonna build a sequence for us, which is gonna look exactly the same as the sequence we just saw in DaVinci Resolve. And the other files in here are the media files. And in Avid, you need to have the media files in a specific folder and it's called Avid Media Files. I already have mine open here, but if I just hit somewhere else and I don't know where to find it, I can write Avid Media Files and then it will pop up here. It can be quite hard to find it, but if you just search for it, it's the easiest way to find it. Gonna double click on it. It's probably gonna look like this when you open it. And inside the MXF, you'll have a couple of folders or maybe you just will have one folder. In this case, I have folder one and folder three because folder two is not in use. I'm gonna make a folder called folder two. And in my case, it landed outside of the MXF folder. And it's very important that it's inside. If you don't keep this structure of Avid Media Files, MXF, and your folder number two in this case, 
Avid Media Composer won't be able to see the files. So the first thing we're going to do is to open Folder 2. I'm just going to double click on it so you can see what's going to go on. I'll take all my media files and drag them in here. And that's basically it. What's going to happen is that once we start Avid Media Composer up, it'll scan all the folders and it'll scan these files. And what it will do is it'll build a database file like these two here. So let's start the Avid Media Composer. The Avid is starting up. And if for some reason something doesn't work, if it comes with errors, make sure you run the new software, both in the Avid Media Composer and in DaVinci Resolve. What you just saw before, it showed you very quickly that it was scanning the folders and because it was a tiny folder that we added with just five clips in it, it went very fast. I'm just gonna open up my test project now. In here, I have a folder or a bin called Final Edit and it contains my final edit sequence without any grades on it. And it doesn't have any sound on it as well because I exported it for grading. And to make sure there's no errors, I just remove the sound that I don't need. So the next step is to make a new bin. I'm gonna call this Graded Master. I have my final edit and my Graded Master. And in my Graded Master bin, I'm gonna import the AFF. So I'm going to say input, import media. I'm going to find my bin to Avid. And then I'm going to click open. And now it has imported all the clips. And these are my graded clips. It has also made a sequence. And now what I can do is I can leave my graded sequence in the timeline. Then I can take my final edit and drag it over here and I can compare it. Or what I know some people will do is they'll take their final edit and then they will add their graded on top. I'm gonna do this with adding a track. And then I'm just going to edit in my newly graded clips. And now I can compare. It's kind of hard to see in this one, but it has a little more warmth in it. And this one has been lightened up. And because we gave it handles, we're able to trim it if we need to make some tiny changes. In the description below, there's a link to a PDF with all the steps that you need to remember. And it's very important to remember to close down the DaVinci Resolve before you move on to the Avid Media Composer to make sure that it doesn't look at the files that you are going to use in the Avid Media Composer and vice versa. If you have any questions, please write them in the comment. And if you like the video, just comment and give it a thumbs up. And please subscribe if you want to see more videos like this.